Praise the Lord, everyone, and God bless you, and welcome back to God's Way Community Church. Amen. We're here today, Sunday, September, October, October the 18th, 2020. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, God bless you, and welcome back to God's Way Community Church. Today is October the 18th, 2020. Amen. We thank God for being here. We hope that God is blessing you. Amen. And we're going to uh, go into our Bible study for this morning, for Sunday morning. Amen. We pray that God is going to bring us back and we will be able to uh, fellowship back once again. Amen. In uh, limited quantities very soon. Amen. As things are looking uh, somewhat better. Amen. In terms of what ha is happening with the COVID-19 virus. Until then, we are going to press forward in God, doing what we can do with what we can do. Amen. So uh, we pray that God will keep you and bless you and uh, help you through this time. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer together before we start our Bible class today. Amen. And we pray that God will bless you with the Bible study today. Amen. As we, we teach, amen, amen, on this subject that we believe that God has given us. Amen. Blessed Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Lord Jesus, we give you the praise and the glory. There's no God like you. There's none beside you, Lord. We ask you to forgive us for our sins, blot out our transgressions, help us to walk worthy in your precious sight. Help us to go forward in you, Lord, and not backwards. Help us to do the things that will please you and not ourselves. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Once again, thank you for joining us. Amen. A little bit of housekeeping, as is our common uh, theme. Uh, please go to our website and download a document for today's lesson. Amen. You will find it there. Also, if you have any questions, amen, or comments, please email us at worship at godswaytoday.org. Amen. Amen. Today, our Bible lesson is treat the cause, not the effect. Amen. Treat the cause, not the the effect. Amen. We're going to go to the book of Mark, chapter number seven, verse number 20 to 23. A few scriptures we're going to read there. Uh, let me bring up my text here and we'll go to that particular scripture. Mark, chapter number seven, verse 20 through including 23. I will begin reading it. Please read along with me if you have it and, and, or your Bible open or your Bible app or whatever you're using or the document that we've given you. All right. And it reads this. And he said, that which cometh out of the man, listen to what Jesus is saying, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these things, verse number 23, all these things, somebody say that with me, all, all these things come from within and defile the man, amen. We're going to be teaching today on treat the cause, not the effect, treat the cause. A common response from people today that we live in in, uh, in our society today is that when we have something wrong with us, we it is very common for us to reach for some sort of pill or potion or some sort of a solution that has been produced for us to take. And uh, what often happens is we end up rushing to treat what is happening to us or what's happening within us without really dealing with what is caused the thing to happen to us. We see this all the time, amen? And so sometimes we do not get at the heart of the trouble because we, we take something for our situation, amen? And particularly if that thing gives us a little bit of relief, amen, then we, we, then we end up thinking that we're doing better and sometimes that is not the case. And so we see this, and, and unfortunately, sadly, this approach has fallen and can't come to us, and we deal with things in a spiritual manner, often in the same way. We end up dealing with things that we see going on in the outside of the body. We see uh, our attitudes, we see people's uh, uh, things that they say, uh, the things that we're doing, and sometimes we attack those things with a vengeance when the truth of the matter is we, we need to do some investigation 
some time to find out what is going on in the heart of the matter. What is going on that is causing this? We need to understand that, that, that there we live in a spiritual realm. We are not just physical human beings. We are spiritual human beings. We are human beings that are in touch with spiritual things. Amen. And that we need to understand that there are things that cause things to happen that exhibit themselves in a number of ways. Jesus listed in book of Mark chapter 7 that we just read a number of things. And man, some of these things are pretty bad. Envy, murder, thefts, covetousness, greed. All these things come from within, he said. And they defile a man. You know, one of the things, let me throw this out really quickly before I go on into my first section. Some of the times we see some, when, when, we, when someone has, uh, has, has, has had a murder or they've killed somebody or something, the headline may, may read something like manslaughter. Uh, we will we'll see that. But what we don't see is what caused all that. Don't we? We don't, they don't write anything in the newspaper about the heart of the matter. Okay. What we see is what happened. <laughs> somebody s- s- slew somebody, killed somebody, amen, and they, 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 f- they went into a fit of rage. What caused them to go into that? We don't see that. And so in the church, we need to be cognizant that the enemy is working on us and that we need to learn to deal with those things on the inside. Now let's go back. To be able to, to understand this and the guilt at the heart of the matter, we need to go to the cause of the cause. Amen. I call this the cause of the cause. And for that, we're going to go back to Genesis chapter number three, verse number six. And it says, and the woman saw that the tree was good. We read this scripture many times, amen, but it's a very powerful scripture and it is the beginning of a lot of things that we deal with today. The woman saw what, that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. Now listen to this. She took of the fruit and, and of thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Now, the original sin of cause uh, changed man's heart from the inside. We see that as it just went on, okay? It was from this starting point that the spiritual decay began. We need to understand this if we're ever going to be able to treat the cause is that the spiritual decay came when we sinned in the garden against God. Sin is the cause of it all. Amen. We need to understand it. Somebody, somebody say that with me. Sin is the cause of it all. Okay. So sin caused this thing. And through the deception and disobedience that Adam and Eve had, we handed over. I want to say hand over because this is exactly what happened. We handed over our dominion over the devil so that we no longer have that dominion over him. And since that time, sin has desired to corrupt us. God spoke to, to Cain and he told Cain, sin desires to have you. Amen. So why he's at the door. Amen. Sin is always there and we must fight. Amen. Because of that, from that very time since then, we've had to fight against all sort of things that have come upon us, basically b- based on the same three things that Eve saw in the garden, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You'll find that in Second John chapter number 2, verse 15 through 17. When, le- when lust was conceived, it brought forth sin, and we are still dealing with those things today. So as a result of that sin coming in and the, our hearts becoming decayed, amen, we are struggling today with many adversities, uh, many uh, ugly and perverted and twisted relationships, m- many emotional, psycho- psychological, and, and, and mental disorders. All of these things that we are dealing with today are effects. They're not the cause. They're the effects. And we are dealing and struggling with them so much so because of what took place in the beginning. We need to understand that. We need to understand that what we are seeing largely are the effects of what has gone on on the inside of man. Okay? All right? Now, let's talk about how God dealt with this. And we can get an example from God because he started it all. Amen. And he gives us a great example. God dealt with the cause of Adam's sin. Genesis chapter 3 Verse 8 and 9, listen to what it says. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Now, this is very important for us to understand what's going on here. Once sin entered into the heart, man never ever, and I want you to understand this, this is what went on. Once Adam sinned in the garden. We never saw God the same again. Man never looked at himself the same again. And he never looked at the world in which he was in again the same. 
Sin changed that, okay? Immediately when Adam and Eve took that fruit or the forbidden fruit, their eyes were opened. What that means is that they were aware. They became consciously aware of a number of things, both in the physical realm as well as the spiritual realm. They became aware, okay? They immediately begin to feel shame. They immediately begin to feel exposed because they were naked, right? Okay? They immediately begin to uh, feel uh, fear, and they begin to do what man has done over and over again since that day. They begin to, to, to try to fix the outside and try to fix or adjust what the effects were because they were not thinking about the cause, okay? Adam began to do what? The first thing he did was he tried to tried to cover himself. He tried to hide, okay? He, then when God questioned him about the situation, he lied, okay? All of those things are, are, are things that man is doing to this very day. He tries to cover his wrong. Uh, when anybody does anything nowadays, the first thing they do is to, is to think what? Well, I got to cover my tracks, that's the first thing people think of when they do something that is not right. Instead of us crying out to God and saying, God, something's wrong with me. I shouldn't have done this. We try to cover our tracks. We're doing the exact same thing that Adam has done. If that doesn't work, we try hiding. We try hiding ourselves and getting out of the realm so that we can't be accused or we can't deal with the responsibility. And when we are questioned, few people are forthright and come with the honest answer and say, it is me. I've done that. How I would you the, the, the list are as the list is as long as the day is of people that have been guilty of various things that have come up before the a trial or a court or when they were questioned, they they found they perjured themselves. They lied about it, they did everything they could to keep the last thing they did was to tell the truth when it was just no other option. Then they came out and said, Well, yeah, that's the way it was. Why? We are repeating what our father Adam did. Because of what went on in the heart. Man's heart became wicked. This prompted Jeremiah to say in Jeremiah 17 and 9. I think I put that in your notes. The heart, listen to this, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Immediately our heart became wicked and we've had to deal with that ever since. Okay? But if you notice, and you'll go back and I put this in your notes, Genesis 3 and verses 21. We won't read that right now. But when God came on the scene, he, he dealt with them. He punished them. He told them what was going to happen. But God... God dealt with the heart and the cause of the matter. This is what prompted God to kill an animal in the garden. We see the first sacrifice mentioned in the Bible. Okay, and anytime you see something in the Bible for the first time, you know it's very significant, right? And God killed an animal in the garden and made the coats of skins for the two to actually give them some sort of atonement for what they had done. And even though this was a deeper uh, remedy for their problem, it too was only temporary. Okay, the only way man was going to get out of this situation from that way forward is that he was going to have to be born over because his heart was corrupted. Amen. Some people ask sometimes why we preach about being born again over and over again. It is the only way, saints, let me tell you something. Don't let anybody kid you. It is the only way for us to strike at the heart of the cause and deal with what is going on with man. You can have all the social programs you want. You can go out and feed the poor until you don't have another dime in your pocket. You can go out and send people to, to Alcohol Anonymous. You can go out and talk to people, and that's great. Some of those things are good things. In themselves, there's nothing wrong with them. But the heart of the matter, the cause will have to be dealt with, with the cleansing blood of Jesus Christ, with the heart being renewed and transformed. That is the only way it's going to be dealt with because that's what the cause was. And God put a temporary fix by giving them an atonement until the time that Jesus would come so that man could be born over. Okay. This is what happened in the garden. But God, when he came into the garden, he asked Adam this, where art thou? When he asked Adam that, he was speaking to Adam's conscience, to the very depth of his soul, not to not what has happened to you, okay? He dealt with, hey, look, you have the cause of what you are dealing with now, what is causing you to do what you're doing. I'm asking you, where are you in your heart and the conscience of man? Because something has gone deadly wrong for you to be hiding behind a tree with frigly clothes on, okay? God spoke to the heart of the matter. We need to understand that it's important for us if we're going to get anywhere with God, if we're going to be changed, if we're going to be renewed, that we're going to have to understand how to deal with the cause and not the effect. All right? 
Here's what's important about understanding the spiritual cause produces natural effects. Uh, one of the reasons why it's important for us to deal with the, the, the cause and not the effect, because sometimes what we see going on, as we were saying, on the outside is not, not what's being caused, but what's going on the inside. Go to 1 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 1 through 3, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, uh, verse number 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days, uh, uh, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving from them which believe and know the truth. Now, this is a very powerful scripture that Brother Paul gave us, and I want you to look, listen to this very closely. He, Paul, in his epistle, he writes, and he begins to give us an example of cause and effect. Listen to what he says here. He says, uh, first of all, what has caused all of these effects that he gives us? It's a backslidden heart. The backslidden heart and the corrupted heart of the individual is what causes this. Now, listen to all the causes. The people are going to turn away from the from the doctrine. Peter talks about it this way. Peter says in, in, in 2 Peter chapter number 2, as the dog returns to his vomit and the sow to her that have been washed to her wallowing. So Paul says in the latter days, people are going to depart from the faith. The cause of them departing from the faith is their heart is going to be decayed and is going to go back to a backslidden state and they will depart from the faith. Listen, let me tell you something. Don't let anybody kid you when there are a lot of people who think still of the doctrine that is taught of eternal security. The only way we're going to be eternally secure with God is that we live for God until he takes us out of here. But when we quit living for God and we go back into the world and we allow the old man to overrun us, amen, don't think that we're going to be right when the Lord comes. Don't let anybody kid you on that. There's lots of scriptures that teach otherwise. Paul said that when we... Turn away from the faith. That's going to be a, a sign. That's an effect of our heart going bad. Look at what else he says. Then he says they're going to be giving heed to seducing devils, listening to de devilish doctrines. Okay, that is exactly what is happening. That's an effect. Why are so many people listening to so many false doctrines? Amen. Because they have been seduced. Their heart has gone bad and they are listening to the things of the world. Then he goes on and he says this. They're speaking lies and hypocrisy. Then he goes on to talk about how they're going to forbid people to marry. Okay, why would anybody forbid anybody to marry and God instituted marriage in the garden? This is a condition of the heart that has gone bad, that we are causing and, and requiring and mandating, not saying you don't have to if you don't want to, but forbidding people to do that. Okay, all of these things that Paul has given us are effects of the cause, which is greater, the heart condition. This is why we must understand this. Those are outward things that are happening on the inside, okay? So what we have to understand is when, when, when Paul taught this, he wanted people to see that these are things that are going to go on when the heart is not where it should be, all right? Very important to the, that we understand that. Take a look at Acts chapter number 16, verse number 16 through 18. This is a very, very important scripture that I want to bring out, Okay? Uh, verse number 16, it reads, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Verse number 17. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Okay. Verse 18. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit. Listen to what that, he turned and said to the spirit. I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that same hour. Now, this is very important that we understand the scripture. This young damsel, the Bible calls her a damsel, which means he was a young girl. When Paul went to preach in a certain area, she was possessed with the spirit, okay? Not a spirit from God, possessed with the spirit of the enemy, of the devil. But what was her behavior? She followed them every day and in a loud voice told the people that were listening, these people are servants of the most high God and they have come 
to show us the way of salvation. Now, there's nothing wrong with that statement, is there? When somebody listened to this girl who may not have known her situation and what she was up to, would have thought, perhaps, from looking on the outside of the effects, that she was even an advocate for the gospel. That she probably was working along with Paul and Zion. That she was there along with the company of the apostles because she was merely going around saying what they were doing. She was speaking the truth. Let me tell you something. The, the reason we have to learn to deal with the cause is that sometimes even when people are, are, are saying certain things that are true, doing certain things that look okay, the cause of what's going on in the inside is not good. We have to understand that the enemy can cause us to have a wrong heart, but he is so smooth that he will allow the outside not to appear to have a problem when there's really a problem going on in, in, in the inside. Paul, after he was grieved for a while, spoke to the spirit of the matter and cast out the demon. Because the outside, had he dealt with the effect, he didn't tell her, uh, stop doing that or be quiet or don't come to our meetings anymore. Why? That would only be a treatment of the, of the, of the effect, not the cause. He went to the heart of the matter. Okay? We need to understand that sometimes spiritual problems have natural effects. Some, uh, have you ever seen people sometimes they get a headache and they say, oh man, I've got a terrible headache and I'm going to take some aspirin. The aspirin may give them the relief, but what is really causing the headache? Headaches come for some reason. Headaches come from some place. Pain in the body is an identification that there is something wrong inside the body. Not that one is, that the pain that you feel is the problem. The pain that you feel is just a way or a sign to say that something is wrong inside. But now, going lay, going and lay down and taking an aspirin or Tylenol may give a person some temporary relief. In matter of fact, it may give them so much relief that after a while they say, man, I feel much better. But they still don't know what caused this headache? The headache came from a cause. And sometimes we see this in counseling. We see some people, they're depressed or they're lonely or they're hurting or they're going through this or this. And they're trying to deal with the cause, the, uh, the effect of the matter. But what is causing the problem? The heart of the matter has, is the fact that Jesus said all of these things come from within. So until we get to the point that we begin to understand that it's an inside job that brings things that are wrong to the outside. Likewise, as we talk about, about holiness, holiness begins on the inside, right? God makes you holy when you are born again of the water and the spirit. He makes us holy that way. The Holy Ghost is what makes us holy. But what happens as we begin to live holy as because we have the Holy Ghost, that holiness begins to permeate to the outside and it begins to cause other things that are out on the outside so that what what is going on the inside becomes more evident. The same is true uh, with, with, with our natural lives. Things that are going on on the inside produce outside results. And sometimes we got to be careful because what we see people doing sometimes may make us think that everything is okay when there is really a problem on the inside. There's a cause. We have to understand that. This is very important for us to keep in mind. All right. There's a danger. And there's a danger in treating just a cause, and we're going to talk about that. Now, so that we know that certain things on the inside, certain spiritual causes have natural effect. We just talked about that, and we're going to go to another scripture. Now, there's a danger. There's a danger with treating the effects instead of the cause, and we need to talk about that and why that's dangerous. A good example of that comes from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 16, uh, verse number 14 through 17 and verse number 23. This is uh, uh, the, the story of King Saul, and most of you know that story, so we won't go into detail on that. We know that King Saul uh, was, was reigning over Israel before David was anointed king, and King Saul backslid in his state with God, and what God did was God sent an evil spirit, okay? God, the evil spirit from the Lord troubled Saul. And it was because Saul's heart was blackened that that evil spirit came upon him. And we're going to read about that. So in verse number 14, uh, verse number 14, it says this, but the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. Look at verse number 15. And Saul's servant said unto him, behold now, an evil spirit from the Lord troubleth thee. Okay. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out a man who is cunning player of a harp 
And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from the Lord is upon thee, he shall play with his hand, okay? And thou shalt be well. Listen to what he's saying. When the evil spirit troubles you, he's going to play with his hand and you shall be well. Verse number 23. And when it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David played, or David took at harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. You know, you've heard uh, the, the, the saying, music calms the savage beast. Uh, maybe, maybe that's where that comes from, but we can certainly see that it did this. Now, notice what took place in this setting. David played skillfully, and the evil spirit moved on, and Saul was well. Or at least it appeared that he was well. But what do we find that happened? The spirit came back. It didn't stay away, right? It returned. And every time it returned, they would have to do this all over again. To the point that it was so bad that when the evil spirit was on Saul, he tried to kill David. It would return over and over again. And to the point it drove Saul to try to kill David so much that David had to flee for his life. David had to flee from his life for Saul, for his life for Saul, for eight years. He traced him and chased him and hunted him down because of this evil spirit. So the music, what I'm saying is the music did not do the justice to actually treat the cause of Saul's problem. The cause was that Saul's heart had been uh, backslidden from the Lord and he had a hardened heart and it became so hard that his conscience was seared that he could not turn around again, that he was just backslidden from the Lord. But the cause was never really fixed, only the effect. So while the music, we can put on soft music, I'm going to put the music on to make me feel better. I'm going to take a hot shower. It's going to make me feel better. I'm going to take an ass, but I'm going to lay down. I'm going to talk to my so-and-so on the phone for 15, 20 minutes, make me feel better. But are we treating the cause? I'm going to go see, I'm going to go, do you know what some people do? Some people shop, they buy stuff. I, I read an article not too awfully long ago, a person, uh, they had spent thousands, they were in debt over their head, they were just dr drowning in debt because they began to shop online and buy stuff through some little outlet or whatever, and the next thing you know, they had spent so much money, they couldn't stop, they just, they felt like they, 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 they had to shop all the time. Why? People do those things. Some people eat, they just, they just can't stop eating because they figure like this is going to give me some comfort. This is well, and that's why we get the term comfort food. Amen. We we have those words, but what are we doing? We're treating effects. We're not treating causes. We're treating the effect. I'm gonna get something that's gonna soothe me. No, we need to ask God. God, what's wrong with me? What's going on on the inside of my heart that is causing me to have this problem? I need something that's going to fix the problem. We need a cure, saints. The world is not going to be fixed. You know, we have people who really believe that the way of human beings' problem is for man to think himself clear of his problem. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. We can do all the thinking that we want. Uh, we are never going to be in a place where we can fix and solve the problems we have because they are internal. They are spiritual. They are of a nature that the effects we see I can't have come from our father Adam's sin. And until we understand that this sin has to be eradicated with the blood of Jesus Christ, with the redemption of the soul, with the changing of the nature from the inside, there is no way we're going to ever be able to move beyond treating effects. Okay. We can put a band-aid on something all we want, but if there's a gaping wound and your arteries bleeding, the band-aid is not going to do it very much good. Right? You've got to get in there and tie that thing off. You've got to seal that artery. You've got to do something to stop it from bleeding. You're going to bleed to death. The world is bleeding to death because we are fixing effects and not dealing with causes. All right? Let's go on to this. It's very important that we understand it. So it's dangerous. I wanted to reiterate that because this is very important. They brought David to Saul and he played his music and the music helped soothe him for a while. But it wasn't a fix. Saul ended up going to his grave with an evil spirit because of his deadly heart. He ended up consorting with the witch of Candor. Remember that? 
Then at the last end, what did he do in verse in chapter number thirty-one of second uh, for, of Second Samuel? No, First Samuel, chapter number thirty-one. What did Saul do? He fell on his own sword and killed himself. What was wrong on the inside drove him to take his life. This is happening, saints. This is happening to people all over the world in the church as well as outside of the church. People are taking their lives. Why? Because they cannot get a solution for what's going on on the inside. They've given all their money to doctors. They've given all their money to, to, to lawyers. And they've given all their money to uh, psychiatrists. And they are not better because they have never treated the cause. Okay? They have never really dealt with the cause. And until they do that, they're not going to be able to get any better. They may find some relief. It may be temporary. It may make them feel better. But fixing and dealing with effects is a dangerous business. Because as Saul found out, that little bit of music only going to last him a while. He needed something to change the heart. And he didn't have that. Okay, Sadly for him, it drove him to his death. Because he never fixed what was really wrong. What do we need then? This is the question that we ask ourselves because this is the really the real crux of the matter. What then do we need to be able to treat the cause and not the effect? That's a very good question. What do we need? Well, we know that we, we got into this situation from the beginning from our disobedience to God. Amen, right? So if we did that, we know that we have to be born over. We have to be changed. There has to be something other than what we are doing on the outside that's going to fix the inside man. And we're going to talk about that right now. What we need is the word of God to be able to treat the cause. And we're going to talk about that. Let's go to Psalms chapter 107, verse 20. Listen to this. He sent his word. He sent his word and it healed them. Somebody say healing. Amen. When God sent his word, his word came to heal us and he delivered them from their destructions. His word did the healing. Somebody say, healed by the word. I'm healed by the word. What does that mean? Well, look at Hebrews chapter number four, verse 12 to 13. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now listen to how, how, how deeply the word deals with us. It goes to the very soul and spirit. It goes to the very bone and marrow. It gets to the bottom or the source of what the trouble is. Look at verse number 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The word is powerful and quick and as a two-edged sword gets to the soul and the spirit of the matter. Well, what is that? Well, let's go to the next scripture. We'll find out what the word is. Luke chapter number four, verse 18. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Luke chapter four, verse 18 through 19. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me. Now, the scripture says he sent his word. Amen. But Jesus said he has sent me, okay, to heal the brokenhearted, not to fix the effect, but to heal the brokenhearted, not to put a bandaid on, but to heal what's wrong, not to just tie something around you and say you're going to be okay and pat you on the back and have a prayer meeting, but to fix and to heal what is going on in the heart. Look at what he says, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering the sight of the blind, to set the, cap the set at liberty them that are bruised. And verse number 19, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, Jesus said, he sent me. Psalms chapter number 107 said he sent his word. Well, then what are we saying? We know that Jesus is the living word. John chapter one, verse one tells us what? In the beginning was the word and the word was with, with God and the word was God. Verse number 14 tells us what? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we know then that Jesus is the living word. Let me tell you something. If we're going to fix the cause of what is causing our sins in, the, in our bodies, in this world, in our homes, in society, in our churches, hello somebody, if we're going to fix those causes, we're going to have to get a hold of the living word. He sent me, Jesus said, he stood up in the synagogue and read that scripture and quoted the book of Isaiah and said, he has sent me to heal. 
Let me tell you something. There are a whole bunch of people who need to put their money in their pocket and go down on their knees and seek the living word so that they can be really healed instead of spending so much uh, uh, and, and having a cabinet full of medicine that is really not taking care of the problem that is at roost. Amen. Did you know that, that the, the medical industry, the pills that are sold, now I'm not telling anybody not to go to the doctor. Don't get me wrong. If you feel that you have to go to the doctor, please don't tell anybody that Pastor Bacon is teaching that we should not go see uh, a doctor and get some sort of medical intervention. But I'm telling you this, that industry is a multi-billion dollar industry. People's cabinets in their homes are filled with medicine all the time. They'll take one or two pills here, then they've got to go see the doctor here, and they'll give them another handful of pills, and then they'll go over here, and they'll get another handful. Oh, take this bottle of solution. Take this potion. Drink this. Eat that and a little bit of that, and before you know it, they're got, they've got pills for this, that, and the other, and they still, hello, somebody, still don't have healing. Amen. Why? Because many of the practitioners that you and I deal with today, I'm sad to say this, but it's the truth. Many of the practitioners we deal with today are treating effects and not really getting to the cause. Sometimes they don't know what the cause is. And then sometimes the cause is a purely spiritual thing. You know what helped me one day? Years ago, many, many years ago, I read this somewhere and it changed the way I thought about things a great deal. The particular article that I read said that 50% of the people that were in the hospital are there because of mentally induced illnesses, self-mentally induced illnesses. They thought themselves sick so that they ended up into the hospital. 50% is what the article said. Now, if that article is anywhere halfway true, that means there are a lot of people who have these effects and things going on and they think they need to go to the doctor, but they need to go to Dr. Jesus. There is much that is wrong with them that the natural doctor will never be able to cure. But Jesus said he was sent to do the healing, the living word. This is why it, it, it's, it's, it's incumbent upon us to understand that we must be born over. We must be changed. The Bible says that Jesus that God, Jesus knew what was in man. Why? He knows what the problem is. That's John chapter number 2, verse number 24 and 25. Jesus knew what was in man. He knows that the cause of our struggles and our adversity, he knows that the cause of our darkness, the cause of our twisted and tormented relationships, the cause of our fear the cause of our doubt. He knows where that comes from. And he knows that the only way to heal that is to have you born over and have the blood of Jesus applied to your life so that the heart on the inside will be clean and then the outside can be clean. Jesus knows that. That's why we got to get a hold of him. He is the living word. It's incumbent upon us to understand this because it's very important. We will never fix our real problem by dealing with the facts alone. We've got to be willing to deal with the cause. Jesus, in our scripture that we read in the book of Mark, we'll go back over that in just a minute in this next piece. Jesus chided the scribes and the Pharisees because they had spent so much time dealing with the outside and the inside was the problem. Okay, let's go to that scripture. Let me tell you why the word works. Here's why it's important for us to get a hold of the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, the living word, we're going to go to that. It's important for us, <clears throat> excuse me, it's important for us to go to the, the, uh, the word of God and get the living word so that we can actually be transformed. Uh, trying to fix the situation from the outside, as we just said, is not going to do the trick. Here's why the word works. We're going to talk about that for a few minutes before we get our Bible class, uh, why the word is significant and why it works. Let's go to, first of all, back to our original scripture that we opened up with the Bible class with in Mark chapter number seven, verse two through eight and verses 21 to 23. I'm not going to read all that, but I'm going to read some of it because I want to make a point here. Uh, here's why the word works. The word deals with what really defiles. Okay, understand that. The word deals with what really defiles. That's why it's so powerful. That's why it works. It gets to the heart of the matter. We just read in the book of Hebrews. In Mark chapter 7, when Jesus is talking to the scribes, verses, he says, and when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled hands, that is to say with unwashed hands, they found fault. Now listen to this. 
Okay, for the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands often, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. Look at verse number four. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be, which they have received to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. Okay, look at verse seven. How be it in vain, listen to what the scripture says, in vain they do worship me, Jesus tells them, okay? In vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and other such things that ye do. Verse 20, and he says, and back to what we read originally, that that which cometh out of man, that defileth him. And he goes on and lists all those things we read earlier. So Jesus chides the Pharisees because they had spent a, a large amount of time dealing with the outside. Saints, let me tell you something. Sometimes we primp and we primp and we do this and we polish and we do all these things to try to make ourselves feel the Christian part. We try to feel righteous instead of living and doing what God has told us so that we can be righteous. And that righteousness starts with an inside job. It starts with a transformation of the man from the inside. So there's no need in us trying to deal with those things until we get the inside clean. Jesus said, make first to clean the inside of the platter. Now, we can spend a lot of time dealing with that because that's where the cause is. Let's clean the inside. Uh, I, I know this, and, I, and, I, and I'd like to throw this out, that sometimes we, we, we come, and, and here's what we do as, as individuals sometimes. We don't like to appear, uh, how should I say it? We don't like to appear bad or to look bad in front of people. We're very conscious. We don't want people to, to think bad of us. And sometimes we put on airs because we want people to, to feel that we're righteous or this, that, or the other. But all of that cannot help us if the inside is not clean. None of that would help us. Jesus told the scribes, stop fooling with all that and deal with the inside of it. This is where the murder comes from. This is where hatred comes from. This is where racism comes from. This is where prejudice comes from. This is where backbiting and gossip and evil talking, this is where the evil eye comes from. This is where all the covetousness and greed, all of this comes from the inside. I need to cover something on the inside or do something with the inside that's going to change so that I can be saved. James told the people this way in James chapter number four and verse, uh, chapter uh, four, verse eight through 10. He told them to do what? He said, cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. See, it's not enough to us to just have clean hands. <laughs> cleanse your hands and purify your heart. Okay, Some of us can hold up clean hands. Our hands are clean. I'm ready to eat now. But we may not have a clean heart. Okay, James says clean both. What is he trying to say? The inside and the outside, both are important. But to, for us to deal with the outside issue, the effect, and not deal with the cause, is not going to do us very much good at all. Cleanse them both, he says. All right. This is very important. The heart defiles is what Jesus was trying to get over. And we need to understand that no one, listen to this. I want to tell you this. No one will ever be clean enough so that we can live and reign with Jesus in heaven with a defiled and unrepentant or unclean heart on the inside. I want to put this out because we, we, we live in a day where people are really, really big on social justice. And I am not one that is against social justice. We need justice. But friend, let me tell you something. Social justice is not going to affect our unrepentant heart. Social justice is a band-aid for a gaping wound. And what we need to do is fix the cause. Repentance, being born again, of water baptism in the name of Jesus, infilling of the Holy Ghost, Okay. The change that will come over us is what's going to help us to live what we should. And that is going to be of more value to us than all the social justice that we can ever administer. All right? Very important. Let's go on to the next one. Here's another thing. Here's another reason why we got to get the word. The, the word exposes motives. Somebody say motives. This is very important. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 1 through 11. We're not going to read all that because it's 11 verses in them. And for the sake of time, we're not going to read them all. But I'm going to just give you a little bit. This is a story about Ananias and Sapphira. 
Ananias and Fire, when the church started, people were, people, the, the early Christians really felt like the rapture was going to take place anytime, that Jesus' second coming in was going to happen almost immediately. So many of them got together and they sold their possessions. They began to sell things and they gave money to the poor because they really didn't think they were going to be around that long. A certain person named Ananias, he had some property and he sold that. Okay. So now when he sold the property, he came to Peter and he was going to give to the, to the poor. But when he came to Peter, Peter asked him, tell me if you sold the property for this much. And he said, yeah, that's what I sold it for. But he wasn't telling the truth. So Peter says to him, why? This is verse number three. Okay. Chapter number five. Listen to what Peter asked him. He says, but now I'm going to go back to verse number one, because I want you to get this part. But a certain man named Ananias with the wife Sapphira sold a possession and kept back part of the price his wife also being privy to it and brought, okay, a certain part of it and laid it at the apostles' feet. And Peter said to Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Watch what he asked him in verse number four so that we can get to the cause of this matter. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And, and after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? okay. Okay, why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? This is the crux of the matter right here. In his heart, something was wrong. And he listen to what Peter told him. This is very important, saints. Peter said to him, the land was yours. You could have kept it, sold it or not. When you sold it, it was still yours. You could have said, I'm going to give you some of the part. I'm going to give you none of the part because I really didn't want to get rid of it. What made you lie about it? The problem was his heart was not right to start with. Either he, in his heart, he never wanted to sell the property in the first place, but he was pretending to go along with everybody in, this, in the church. Hello, somebody. There's a pretending spirit that's roaming around in churches today. And people are trying to pretend that they're in when they're out. And they need to understand that God is going to expose this thing for the thing that it is. The Holy Ghost spake through Peter and he said, why did the, the devil cause you to lie? You could have just said, I'm not going to do this and you would have been better off. But because something was wrong with your heart, it prompted you to lie when you didn't have to. Uh, I heard a preacher say one time, some people will lie when the truth will do. When all they had to do was tell the truth, they'll lie. Why? There's a heart problem that causes them to be predisposed to lying, prone to lying. And after a while, they begin to lie so much, they can't tell the difference between a lie and the truth. Okay? Why? There's a heart problem going on. So to make a long story short, Ananias fell dead on the spot. And his wife came in and Peter questioned her. And she, because they had plotted to lie, she fell dead. Unfortunately, they didn't get a chance to get that right the second chance time. But it's important for us to realize what the word does. See, the word will go in and it will deal with the heart to let us know I don't have to lie. That's one thing about being saved and telling the truth. Once you tell the truth, you don't have to remember everything you said. Because if you know that when you spoke it, it was the truth, as far as you know, to your, the best of your knowledge, it was the truth. You don't have to go around and worry about somebody saying, you told me something that wasn't so. When I spoke, it was true. So I don't have to worry about it. I, I may not remember every word, every detail I said to you, but I know I didn't lie to you. Okay. Why? There's a heart condition that we have to change to get us to see that. The word, this is why we need the word of God. This is why we need Jesus to do a fix on our heart, saints. This is why we need a change on the inside because the word will change us to the point that we won't want to lie. There's a heart problem there that has to be dealt with because it's the cause. And Peter recognized that and called Ananias on it and his wife. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Here's the next reason why we need the word. The word purges us of the smallest contaminants. You know, my mother-in-law, she likes to clean and she uses bleach a lot because bleach kills germs. Most people know that if you, you want to you kill germs, you can go get some hand soap and you can get some, you know, what do they, what do they call that stuff? The antibacterial soap. You can go get some of that. But, but most people know they really want, they, they want a germ killer. They're going to reach for bleach. 
if they can put it on the, the, the surface, because sometimes it'll taint the surface, surface because it's so potent, right? But we need something that will kill the, the smallest contaminants. The Word of God does that. All right. Uh, we, we talked about how it will actually separate us from separate the, 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 the bone and the marrow and the, the two edged sword. We talked about that. Listen to what Paul says in first Corinthians chapter five or six through seven. This is why it's important for us to get a hold of the word of God, to be able to actually deal with the cause and not the effect. He says, your glory is not good. It's not good that you honor yourselves in this matter. This is what Paul is telling them. OK, know ye not that a little leaven, listen to this, somebody, a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. So what he said is we must understand something, that, that the smallest of sins that we have going on in the heart corrupts the whole heart. In short, that's exactly what he's saying. The smallest amount is going to corrupt the whole. Uh, years ago, and then when he's talking about leaven, he means yeast. Years ago, I, I think people still cook with yeast today. Uh, they, they'll put a little bit of yeast in, in a bread, and the yeast will cause it to rise. So he's saying if you had a little bit of yeast in the bread, as far as the whole loaf is concerned, the whole loaf has yeast in it. Okay, So if we've got sin in our heart, the whole heart is corrupt. So we need the Word of God that's going to go in and transform us. Us and cause us to have a different heart. How do we get that? To be born over. Oh, amen. That, that's why Jesus said, that, except a man be born again, what? Of water and the spirit. He talked about a rebirth so that we can actually do what? Start over again because we have this thing in our heart that is not going to allow us to walk with God and to live right. So this is why the word is so important. And Paul said, you need to deal with that. Purge out the the, the the lump, okay? You know, get rid of the leaven. Get rid of the sin. This is why David in Psalms chapter 139, verse number 24, he prays a prayer and he said, God, search me and see that if what? If there's any wicked thing in me, okay? Sometimes we have to ask God to do a deep diving search, to go into the inside and look on the inside and pull what out of us is wrong so that we can have a clean heart. You and I can only clean to a certain degree, Right? We, we can wipe down the outside. We make it look really clean. And we may even try to do a little bit over here and there. But God can go on the inside and expose the real crux of the matter. We need to ask God, God, treat the cause. Treat the cause of my heart. Treat the cause of my problem. Why is my attitude so bad? Why do I not get along with the other saints? Why is it such a problem for me to go here and do that? Why can't I fellowship? Why do I not want unity? How come I have to gossip so much? What is causing it? What is causing it? Don't give me a Band-Aid fix, God. Give me a, a fix of the heart, of the cause. We need the word of God for that. Amen. The Bible teaches us that Jesus came that he can heal us from the inside out. When we make the inside of this thing clean, the outside will be able to be a lot better. There would be, I, I don't I, I don't know how many there are. I read an article that, that how many hundreds or thousands of mental health operations there are or professionals and things of that nature. And don't get me wrong. And some of those people have their place and, and they do a good job. Uh, many of them, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, should close their doors and go out of business because they've done people a whole lot more disservice than they have a good service. They, they would have been a lot better off had they told them, you know what your problem is? You need to go and I get on your knees and you need to talk to the Lord. But I know that kind of counseling is not something that people want to hear nor is it something that the professional world teaches nowadays. But what we have done is robbed people people of the opportunity to have the real problem in their lives dealt with. And I'm here to tell you right now, if you're dealing with some issue, no matter what it is, I want you to do this. I want you to start with the Lord. Start with him first. I know we, we used to sing that song, when I tried everything else and everything's failed, try Jesus. Well, why must he be the last thing we try? Let him be the first thing. <laughs> Amen. People used to sing that all the time. When you've tried everything else and everything's failed. No, we need to try Jesus first and let him get to the cause of the problem and fix the heart of the matter. Then the outside can be taken care of because really what's going on is an inside job. Amen. Let's treat the cause, not the effect. Let's ask God to make us over on the inside so that we'll be right, so that we can live right, 
We can talk right. We will know what we should do and how we should carry ourselves. Some of the problems that we're dealing with, saints, that people are, are taking medicines for all over the world would be cured up if they would just do what God said and be born again from the inside. Amen. I hope this message has helped you today. I hope it blesses your heart. I hope it encourages you and inspires you to let God deal with you. Let God treat the cause. Uh, there are so many people I've heard about in recent times that are dealing and struggling with so many different things, and I pray for them. I pray that God will bless them, but I'm going to tell you something. If you're listening to this video and you have some problems in your life, I want you to pray. I want you to ask God to, to, to go into your heart, ask for forgiveness and repentance in your heart that God will start on the inside. It just may be, saints, it just may be that what is really bothering you is a spiritual thing, and it's exhibiting itself in these other ways. Amen. And when God corrects what's wrong in your heart, you'll find that you won't have to go and do what you thought you were going to do in terms of spending a whole bunch of money here and there. You will find yourself, amen, seated in your right mind. And so we ask God to give you that. May God bless you and he keep you. Don't forget, do it God's way and you'll get God's results. Hope to see you back next time. May God bless you in Jesus' name.